On yesterday's video, Sidratul Muntaha said, Nice information. Hey, eyes up here, Mr. Muntaha. I'm more than just a massive heaving set of news stories. For I am your host, Andrew, and this is Crypto Espresso, your teeny tiny daily shot of caffeinated crypto headlines. It is the Tuesday news day, so brace yourself. First up, Bitcoin staged an impressive rally on Tuesday, surging from $19,000 to highs of $20,338. The world's biggest cryptocurrency had risen by 8% in 24 hours at one point, with other major cryptocurrencies also firmly in the green. Not bad compared to stock markets with the FTSE 100, S&P 500, and NASDAQ all flat. Bitcoin has had an extremely close correlation to equities for most of the year, but indicators suggest this strong bond is beginning to weaken. This might be a sign that the final few casual investors left in the market have departed, leaving only those with diamond hands remaining. In other fiat developments, British investors have been left reeling after the pound sank to an all-time low against the US dollar on Monday. FTX has won a highly competitive auction for Voyager Digital's assets. The crypto exchange bid a total of $1.42 billion for the bankrupt lender's assets, and note, Voyager's $650 million claim against Three Arrows Capital is excluded from this deal. A committee of unsecured creditors were said to be in favor of FTX's bid, which could ensure that affected customers begin to access their frozen funds sooner rather than later. The deal is set to be presented to a bankruptcy court in New York on October 19th. This marks a rather stunning reversal of fortunes for FTX. Back in July, Voyager rejected a takeover proposal from Sam Bankman-Fried's company. The offer was dismissed as a low-ball bid dressed up as a white knight rescue. Well, now who's laughing? Do Kwan has broken his silence after an Interpol red notice was issued. It means law enforcement agencies around the world are now being asked to locate and arrest the embattled founder of Terraform Labs. He's facing charges in South Korea related to the collapse of Luna and UST, which wiped an estimated $60 billion from the crypto market. Kwan's latest tweets might rub Interpol the wrong way, though, as he's declared that he's making zero effort to hide his whereabouts. He's saying he's regularly going on walks and to the shopping mall, as well as writing code in his living room. No way none of CT hasn't run into me in the past couple of weeks, he tweeted. Nonetheless, he hasn't been confident enough to disclose where in the world he currently is. Hey, Doe, should I tell him you're crashing on my couch? No? All right. Owners of blue chip NFTs can now customize MasterCard debit cards with avatars they verifiably own. The credit card giant has entered into a partnership with Hi, which describes itself as a crypto and fiat financial app. It means the owners of CryptoPunks, Moonbirds, and Bored Apes will be able to have one of their beloved characters emblazoned on the plastic that's in their pocket. As always, the devil is in the details, though. In total, Hi has six total membership tiers, and NFT debit cards are only available to gold, platinum, and diamond members. This involves staking 100,000 Hi tokens, and as of the time of this writing, that would involve locking up about $5,000. Hi cards are available across Europe, and only a limited number of NFT collections are currently supported. And finally, the Bitcoin Mining Council recently claimed that 59% of Bitcoin's energy use comes from sustainable sources. But according to a new report, and let me make sure I get my pronunciation correct, eh -eh. The Cambridge Center for Alternative Finance claims the real figure is closer to 37.6%. However, researchers also took aim at claims that Bitcoin's carbon footprint is comparable to major economies. Its data suggests Bitcoin is responsible for 0.1% of global greenhouse gas emissions, equal to Nepal or the Central African Republic. Alexander Neumuller, who leads the Cambridge Bitcoin Electricity Consumption Index, said, Observing the arguments on both sides, some claims seem far-fetched and based on oversimplifications, while others are based on scant information. And speaking of oversimplifications, shower us with praise and give us attention! In not-so-simple terms, like this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and click on that little bell icon to get buzzed whenever a new Crypto Espresso video goes live. Thoughts on today's video? Well, let us know in those comments below, because I read them and I'll shout out my favorites in the next episode. Want to learn more about today's headlines or crypto in general? Ask Alex in the description below. Alex is also a certified super genius when it comes to all things Web3 and the metaverse. And that does it for the Tuesday News Day. Again, I've been your host, Andrew, and we'll see you all tomorrow.